As my life slowly devolves into a Guilty Gear Strive waiting room, me and my friends have been talking a lot about the hypotheticals around its release. One topic that keeps coming up though is roster size. It's a big conversation, it holds so much weight as to the reasons why people either buy a fighting game or keep playing one. Let's start with the side of this coin which people typically take the most issue with, a small roster. We're going to get into why people have these issues, but I want to start with the positives, because I'm personally a huge fan of a smaller cast. The biggest and probably most obvious perk to a small roster is simply balance. Although times have changed and nowadays fighting games are more often than not made by people that have a deep, deep understanding of their systems, it's still rough balancing a fighting game. There is basically no examples of a title that day one hasn't either had some game breaking tech or clear imbalance that gets fixed in later versions. You can test all you like, but at the end of the day, until you get the game in the hands of hundreds of thousands of players or people like Lord Knight, Sakunoko and SKD, you're just not going to find every problem. A small roster is simple risk mitigation. Less characters, less matchups to deal with, less tech to be found before release, it's a far more controlled environment which realistically a team can manage. This is important, especially for a core fighting game audience. It's hard to sell people on a game after day one if all you're seeing is absolutely brutal tech on Twitter dominating the whole of online. Another big perk is cost in both time and money. The unfortunate reality that comes with a lot of characters is it's a huge investment. If we go back to the Skullgirls Indiegogo, we can see this illustrated really well with one character costing around 150k to make. This doesn't just account for creating the character, it's everything around them. The aforementioned balance, their UI elements, move lists, everything. Even with big budget developers, there's still going to be time constraints on a project. That's just how development studios work. People have to be moved to new games for a company to function a lot of the time. What we can be left with is a bigger cast, but it lacks other content. Things like story mode, challenges or costumes. And although that might not be a selling point to me, if we look at Street Fighter V's release and all the articles about this stuff immediately after, it's important to a lot of people. It can also affect things I do care about, a robust training mode, a good netcode, the sort of features that are absolutely key when I'm figuring out if I want to put time into a game. And ultimately, I'll always value those bits more than a couple of extra matchups to learn. The thing is, I'm not your average fighting game consumer. When Marvel Infinite was announced and Combo Fiend referred to Ultron as the magneto function of the game, it was met with a fair amount of flack. People love that character and he's historic to the Versus series. But to me, I was fine with it. I'm not someone that invests super heavily into a character's aesthetics or lore. It's based on function 99% of the time and the characters I've picked over the last decade kind of show that. But people care about intellectual properties, and to see an example of this, you don't have to look any further than Dragon Ball Fighter Z. There is no world where this anime, tag-based air dasher is half as popular as it is now, without the delicate care they have taken to properly represent this franchise. It's also just the fact that people like things that look aesthetically pleasing to them. If you see someone play Slayer and they slap someone with a counter hit pile bunker, there is straight up just a 50% chance you'll want to pick him. The bigger the cast, the wider the net of visual and kinetic taste that a game can appeal to. And wow, because of the counter hit, he's able to side swap and take the corner yeah. here. And that's a game changer. You've got Kizzy in the corner. Nostalgia plays into this too. I'm not massively into Street Fighter V, my interest dipped as I became further immersed in the world of Guilty Gear, but when Honda dropped as DLC, I bought him day one and picked up the game again. The Street Fighter IV function of 100 hand slapping the shit out of someone was something I wanted to jump back into. It's entirely ingrained in my brain for playing him for years, and I paid to relive that. When a game is released with a big cast, one of the obvious problems is going to be balance take what I said about a small roster and flip it. There are just more variables to consider and unintentionally omit when you're trying to level a playing field. A way this is sometimes dealt with is to homogenize the cast. There are going to be far less issues if everyone has a similar game plan or similar damage. Maybe all the characters have moves to deal with something like a fireball or a mechanic that can be polarizing. Things like this can help prevent too many extreme matchups from rearing their ugly head, but you can potentially be left with a game that feels 
kind of flat. And although these characters might have a fantastic visual identity, gameplay wise they lose something that makes them unique. Some of the downsides to a big roster only appear when you get deeper into fighting games. When you start trying to learn matchups and suddenly you're met with 40 different characters you need to at least know the basics of, that is a daunting task and only gets much worse as more characters are released. Don't get me wrong, it is possible to create a balanced game with a big cast on release, especially for some of these more legacy titles that don't make huge changes to their core mechanics, but more often than not, that is just not the case. So when I talk about Guilty Gear Strive, I want a smaller cast, I want the game to feel balanced and well considered, but the fact of the matter is, I also want people to find characters that make them hype. I want more people to play Guilty Gear, but it's just a balancing act that is so rarely done right. And as much as I want the video to end there, we need to talk about DLC and season passes. It is not a controversial take to say that day one DLC needs to dead. Paying between 40 to 50 quid for a game, then having to dish out another 10 to 15 for five characters they decided to pay all is absolute garbage. Now, they might have done this to make extra money to support the game for the next year, but when multiple characters drop in the beginning, you're basically forced to buy them if you want to learn all the matchups. Heaven forbid they actually let you access these characters in team mode without paying, but let's be real, most companies aren't willing to do that. The other method of further monetizing a game is season passes. My feelings towards a season pass is pretty different despite it being basically the same business practice. This might be due to me just being used to it in every genre of game, but there is some logic behind it that I think is relevant to the discussion of roster size. A season pass typically introduces one new character upon release. Not great and they should probably be free, but at least if you don't want to buy it you're only missing out on one matchup at the start, which realistically you could learn while playing. I'm being very generous here, but it is just the lesser of two ever present evils. After this they release a new character every couple of months. This is good if you have a small roster. Maybe your character isn't out yet, but at least in a couple of months they'll drop. You can tell everyone you're a biker main up until her release to justify how bad you are with Kai. It's a fairly reasonable way of giving people the characters they want, but due to it being a drip release, it allows developers to make sure the core of the game is tight enough with the use of incremental updates. I kind of hate that my conclusion revolves around DLC of any kind, but if we want the benefits of a small roster combined with the reach of a big one, this just seems like the only way. 